watching and following what is happening here. We're going to even call it international. We have people watching from different countries. So it's not just a service that is happening here, but it's happening everywhere. Namibia is watching Botswana, Malawi, Burundi, Bujumbula, Tanzania, Tel Salaam. In many places, people are watching and are following what is happening here. You know, it's good. If you don't do what you just did in the church, then you will be forced to do it elsewhere. You know, it's an amazing thing. I remember when uh, I was at school, we used to go in, um, doing outreaches, and uh, we had a group of people um, uh, doing rapping songs. And we would go at the school and, and do a lot of rapping, and the youth would come and attract the youth and preach to them. It was an amazing way, you know. So it's a good thing to have you and have everyone in, in here, uh, whether you are youth or not. But if, you're, if your heart says you are youth, <laughs> who can say no? When God says yes, So we have our GM in the house. He came to support you. Uh, and our pastors in the house, they came to support you. Wonderful pastors. And uh, I've also seen one of our elders um, also in the house. You know, it's, it's an amazing thing to have you. And um, tonight, contrary to what you thought, that I'll prophesy and I'll pray for somebody. I have a speech, a small speech to talk to you. And that speech, write it in your heart. We are living, the Bible says we are living in the crooked and corrupted generation. Other scriptures, they put it with the word pervis. Say pervis and crooked generation. Say it again, pervis and crooked generation. So you who fear prophecy, relax. I'm not prophesying to anyone. We have people who always fear, especially the youth. They fear so much prophecy. You, you, relax. All right. So it's, it's an amazing thing, overflow. Can I just see your, your joy in the overflow? Who is Charles there? Charles. Because of time. Let's continue talking. All right, sit down. Everybody sit down. All right, so it's an amazing thing, as I said before to have you. Some, they say you are the leaders of tomorrow. Contrary, I say you are the leaders of today. You see, I like to, to speak things that do really matter. I first made my one million dollars when I was 17. And I will tell you why. I, being a man of God and who is um, uh, a prophet, I was supposed to be one of the people who could be living a life of begging. But I chose something. I want you to tell your neighbor, the prophet will talk about two things today. Instinct, instinct and distinct. And distinct. Instinct and distinct. Say that to your neighbor. <laughs> Not district. <laughs> Say instinct and distinct. I, I, I didn't know that uh, KK can dance the way he was dancing. 
I was shocked. Where's Pastor Chuma, by the way? <laughs> All right. So, mark these two words in you. Instinct and distinct. I'm saying this word to everyone who is a youth. These words tend to seem similar. But in the real sense and truth, these are completely two different words. Instinct. It is something that you use that is natural. It is a behavior that you're born with, a natural behavior. For example, animals, for them to eat, they use instinct. When a child is born, the crying is instinct. You don't have to teach a child how to cry. It is a natural thing. It's a natural behavior. And then there is distinct. Distinct, it is rather to choose to be different. It is a different copy. Completely different. So we may have people living together with instinct and distinct. So when you are born, you are born with a natural wisdom inside of you, a natural character. But distinct, it is when now you begin to choose to be different. So instinct is what makes the youth to behave in a certain way. But when you choose distinct as a youth, it's when you begin to choose to be different from all other youths. Come on, tell them about instinct and distinct. Tell them again, instinct and distinct. Are you following? All right. I would like to say this, and I want you to follow very well. I was a prophet when I was so young, and I grew up a prophet. There's no any time I began to prophesy when I was about 10. And um, I, I passed the whole teenage, a prophet. And that's the most dangerous thing, to be a prophet and to be a teenage. Because there's a, the, the teenage community versus the Christian value that is in you. When you are a teenage, that's when you want to test everything. You want to try everything. That's the system of the world. You want to try alcohol. You want to try smoking. You want to try anything in this world. But I can tell you that I passed the whole teenage without none of them. Rather, I chose something that is different. And that is the distinct. Say the distinct. I chose to be different. I chose not to laugh when others laugh. I chose to dance when others don't want to dance. I chose to jump when others are sitting down. And I chose to sit when others are jumping. The system of the world, it is what is going to take so many people to hell. And many people who have not repented their sins who say, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do anything else, I just live like me. Much of their sins, if they never gave their life to Jesus Christ, which God will remind them, are the sins they did in their youth. It doesn't matter what they committed 40 years ago, but if you, you never gave your life to Jesus Christ and asked for forgiveness of sins, that sin will be reminded. Are you there? Now, I, I just want you to hear this. To have the access of being different. I'm not an old man. And Jesus didn't die an old man. Jesus died at the age of 33 years. He wasn't old. He was so young. 
but he saved the whole world. And I, I look at you and I wonder if at your age you're going to save the whole family, your whole family. If Jesus could save the whole world, what about just your whole family? Your whole family. You have the ability and the capacity of doing something that can change and transform spiritually, physically, financially, your whole family. I, I want to say this to you because most of you, you don't even know how to live. Most Christians who are young, who are youth, are still living under the instinct on the natural way of doing things. But there is and a, a complete different way of doing things, which is the distinct way of doing things. I think some of you have had access of my pictures when I was so young. In all those pictures, you see how I was dressing from my childhood, how I used to dress. No matter how, I didn't have money, but I would make sure that even my dressing, it must be different with all others. That clapping hands is lacking air time. I want to say this. We're living in the world where most people who are shaking things are young people. We talk of people who are doing well in Forex are young people. We talk of people who are doing much better in technology, look, look at young men like uh, the owner of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that are young people and they're affecting the whole world. This is why I think some of you heard me on Sunday, where I say, when I saw people doing Facebook, WhatsApp, I said, I'm going to have mine. And I made sure I invented something called Bushidi Bars. Because I refuse, I refuse to watch how others are moving forward. When I saw people using mobile telecommunications and all that, I said, I'm going to have mine. And today we have PSB network. Yeah. When I saw people in, in a movie, in a private jet, I said, I'm going to have mine. And I have mine now. When I saw people driving nice cars, I said, I'm going to have mine. I, I, as I'm talking, I have a lot of nice cars. Talk of Royce, Royce, Bentry. Whatever you talk, you name it. I connect. It's not about connecting. It's about choosing to be different. Tell them I choose to be different. Tell them the fact that your friend is smoking does not mean you two must be smoking. Tell them you two have got different life span. Say so the disease that is going to kill your neighbor is not what is going to kill you. So choose to be different. I want to say something. We have the youth, and take my message very seriously. I, I, I will not say anything, and I'm not praying for anyone. My speech must be written in your heart. Because you're going to remind me 10 years from now that thank you for that speech. Now I am who I am today because of that speech. Yeah. Let me tell you something. When you are born, your parents, they raise you in a natural way, which is the instinct way. For example, animals, when they see fire, they fear the fire. More than anyone teaching them, this is the fire. Because that's the instinct. It's a natural thing in them. They are born with it. But no one, no matter how the instinct you may have, nobody teaches you how to pass out shooting. It is the instinct thing. But you cannot just take a bicycle and start riding it using instinct. You are supposed to learn how to ride the bicycle. So that's not instinct. Now you have chosen to be different. Are you there? Yes. So if you want to ride a bicycle, it involves balancing. It involves focus. It involves a lot of things. 
You can't just wake up in the morning and take a motorcycle and unless you're waiting for a disaster. So you, you must learn this, the gear one, gear two. We do like this, we do like this, and we move like this, and we move like that. So that is not instinct. It's not a thing you're born with. So when you are born, there is a system of the youth which goes and moves in a particular channel where every youth must go through that. But when you are under distinct, you begin to choose to be different from that system. And I had a distinct mind. I said, I'll be different. And I chose to start investing when I was so young. And I began to look on how I can do. And I made a lot of money when I was 17. But that money, all of it, I didn't know how to manage it. Because I didn't know how to manage money. And I lost all of it. And I stayed without the money until I was again 24. And it made some few millions of dollars again. Tell about, are, are you hearing or you are, you, or you are under the influence of instinct? What makes people to be who they are? It is not because they were born that. It's just because they chose to be different. Are you here or you're home? Yes. I chose to be different. I told myself, I will never be. I will never be what the youth are. I will never be as young as these youths are. Not just young, but also in their mind. I chose to be different. I take my prophetic ministry so serious and I separate it from me. The problem of many people, they mix who they are and what they are. Don't mix these two. This is why you see most celebrities, they rise and fall because they mix who they are and what they are. What I am as a prophet is completely different with who I am. I am a person. I have a future. I have responsibilities. I have a family. I have a home. Because of that, I must have things in place that it must make me think as me, not as a prophet. So when the people look at me, all they see is prophet. But they don't you know that is prophet that's what I am but then there is who I am as a person Jesus wasn't just a God on earth there was what he was and there was who he was what he was involved the lives of the 12 disciples there was a need of somebody to provide food. There was a need of somebody to keep the money. That's why he chose a man by the name Judas, who was a treasurer, a secretary, I mean a financial general, a financial manager, who was managing the money of Jesus. Do you know there's a possibility that tonight we can produce about 1,000 richest young <laughs> But I will tell you how, when you choose to be different. Tell your neighbor, instinct and distinct. What makes other animals to eat on top? It is who they are, not what they are. How many here they know a giraffe? You know a giraffe? Simple question. How many they know it? How does it look like? 
Huh? It has a toe what? A toe neck. Do you know a giraffe and a hyena? Who eats on top? Why? Because of a torn neck. If you want to eat from on top, you must develop a torn neck. Tell about develop a torn neck. In your mind, you must have a torn a torn neck. If a giraffe comes here, it will go where those lights are, with the mouth, eating from there, where everybody is eating on the ground. It is not what animals are, it's what, who they are. It is not what I am, it's who I am. Most people, they come to me, they say, prophet, I want your anointing. People, they want what I have, not who I am. They forget before charisma, there is character. Don't desire what people are, but desire who they are. I'm talking to a few people here. How many are following? How many are following what I'm saying? Are you following? Now, when I was young, like 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, when I was a teenager, I had, and I have, and I will have, the following things that guided me to be who I am today. The first and foremost thing, it is what is called manners. Look what you must say, manners. Yes. Most Youth, the most area of challenge is the area of manners. It's unfortunate that bad manners retards one's progress. Bad manners retards one's progress. Bad manners corrupt good behavior. Watch this. If you are there, you may not know this, but I want you to know this. Around me and surround me, I have got people, many people, but one thing they will tell you is they will never gossip near me. Not because I'm a prophet. There are so many prophets who are gossipers. But I just chose to be a different person. I, I, I have got my own way of doing things. Manners. Manners the behavior. How you live. How you handle yourself as a person. Ask your neighbor, how are your manners? Your manners includes your everyday life of living. How you live, how you relate with others. If a person comes to you and they say you're foolish, what do you answer? A slap. <laughs> work on your manners. Tell your neighbor, work on your manners. Manners includes the temper. Are you enough to handle what the devil is trying to bring in your life? Let me tell you something. The reason why the young David was favored by God is not because young David had anything which was extraordinarily apart from his manners. David, so many times, when he was running away from King Saul, 
he was hiding in a cave from King Saul. And the Bible says, King Saul went in the same cave to help himself. And David was in the same cave. And King Saul didn't know. The young man he's looking for is hiding in the same cave. And he, was, he had the ability to kill him right in the cave. But the Bible says, for he remembered, do not touch my anointed. <laughs> David was anointed. King Saul was anointed. But he could not kill him. Manners, stand about manners. How you live, how you talk, how you associate with the people. You must learn to have good manners. When you're at the public, know how you talk. Listen more, speak a little. Am I talking to you? Don't be the loudest speaker all that day. Tell them, listen more. Listen more. Talk, a Talk a little. Don't be the one who talks all the time. Mm -hmm. In 10 minutes, they know your name, they know your mother's name, your uncle, how many are in your family. No, you must learn to be different. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. I'll, I'll talk this much again. I'll be talking about that very soon, about uh, listening more. Talk. I, I'll talk about that when I, I'll be talking about developing principles. But as I'm talking about manners, manners, habits, these things look so simple, but they're very important. You as a Christian youth, you must know your manners are very important. It's what differentiates you from others. Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me, somebody? I remember when I was at high school, it was an awkward situation. They chose me as a head boy. At the very same time, I was the librarian. At the very same time, I was the class monitor. At the very same time, I was representing the whole school as a school presenter. I mean a representer. I had five positions just because of manners. Tell about manners. We have a lot of bad manners, I'm telling you. Bad manners. You must develop inside of you. You must have that. Once again, look what your neighbor said. Bad behavior, bad behavior. Retards, one's retards one's progress. To retard means to affect, to hinder, to negatively impact your progress. I was giving a prophecy to one of uh, our youths here yesterday who is an actor. And I said to him, you are supposed to go far, but your smoking has affected you. So bad behavior, bad behavior. And, and I was giving him a prophecy that you were holding the neck of your girlfriend, Bridget. The relationship ended. Bad behavior retards one's progress. Smoking, drinking. As young as you are, as you have got no two lives, there will be no you of your age again. There is only you of 16, of 25, of 24, of 28, of 31, of 34. Next year there will be you of another year, of another age. Do what you can at that age because there is no other you of that age next year you can 
only grow older, not grow younger. You must know time is going, and you must redeem it. Once your parents didn't make it, it is your time for you to make it. It is very important for you to understand. You may not be rich with the resources, but you may be rich in mind. Great people are not rich in their bank account. Great people are rich in their mind. Look at your neighbor and say, you must know that it's only you of your age. Are you following? Are you following or you went home or something that happened? Number two, develop the do's and the don'ts. Say the do's and the don'ts. People who live by the do's and the don'ts are wonderful people. Do's are the things you can do. Don'ts are the things you can't do. If you have this, you're going to avoid a lot of things in this life. Why don't you drink beer? Because I don't. Why don't you smoke? Because I don't. So the moment you develop the do's and the don'ts, it helps you. Why today you are still clubbing, going, partying, drinking, because you have not developed the don'ts. The moment you're going to have the don'ts, the, it will be just abnormal for you to find yourself in some certain places. Because you don't go there, because you don't drink that, it will be abnormal, it will be completely something that it will make you feel uncomfortable because you don't do it. But why you find yourself today in the party? Tomorrow, oh, I was wrong. Tomorrow, drinking. Tomorrow, with men, different men. Tomorrow, you are these women. What makes you do that? Because you don't have the do's and the don'ts. So you're pulled in every path of the channel. But your friends are going because you're lacking distinct. Distinct makes you to choose the do's and the don'ts. I chose to be different. I chose to be a young person who can preach the gospel. I chose to be a rich young man who knows Christ. I chose to be a young man who can be rich because of God. I chose to be a young man who can affect the whole world with the gospel yet rich. I chose to be a young man who can be a prophet, but yet who can inspire others. It is just the way I did the distinct. Tell your neighbor, you, once you do the distinct, you are gone. Say the do's and the don'ts. Ask him, do you drink? Say, I need your answer now. Say you, you, you drink you. Tell them, you, you drink. And this face is for drugs. <laughs> what are they saying? They just smiled, right? They smiling, it means you are right. Let me scan a little bit. <laughs> Say the do's and the don'ts. Are you there? Yes. Say the do's and the don'ts. You know, I've just seen someone who we were together at school a long time ago. He is actually playing um, in the national team of Malawi, football, national football team of Malawi. This, just come here, just come here. 
Just stand up. Just stand up. I just want, you know, I, I met this man a long time ago when we were at high school. Okay? He's playing for the national team of the country. But, no, and he's playing for, in South Africa, playing for how many teams? Huh? Three teams. Whatever. Super Sport and University of Pretoria. And now I'm playing for Celtic. Now you're, now you're playing for what? Celtic. All right. Now, he plays in the national team of Malawi. All right? Now, I've just seen him now, actually. I didn't know that he, he would come even here. I, I saw him a long time ago. Do you remember the things I told you at school a long time ago? Do you remember what I told you? Yes. Okay, just repeat exactly what I told you. Uh, I remember he told me uh, he was just sitting at the, at the tree. So I was just passing by. Then he called me and said, you're going to play football in South Africa, and we're going to meet there, and I'm going to have my big church. <laughs> so, um, I, I said what? You said, you said that I'm going to play football in South Africa and I'll have a big church. Then I said, uh, I asked him, I said, have you seen any prophet that is having international church? So he said, I'll be the first one and you're going to come to my church. Yeah! He sang it as if he spoke it in a good way. He mocked me. Am I lying? No, you're not lying. He said, look at you. He said, look at you. At least to me, I'm a, a sports person. I can go to where you're talking about. But to you. And today is my son. Look at him now. Give Jesus a big clap of him. Now, do you believe now? Yes, I do believe. <laughs> now, that's why he's here. Oh, I love your son. Sit down. Okay. But do you see this statement? This is when we were at high school a long time ago. And I'm telling him years ago, a lot of years ago, I'm telling him that you'll be playing in South Africa and we're going to meet you there. I'm going to have a big church there. That tells you that I had a vision. Oh, look at you. I didn't say a small church. I even told him I'm going to have a TV. I'm going to, I told him I'm going to have private jets. I'm going to, if he has just cut it short. But I was at high school. At high school. But already, my mind was rich. Are you there? It is not what we are. It's about who we are. If your mind tells you you are this, that's what you are. If your man tells you you're poor, that's who you are. Don't do what others are doing. Don't dance any tune the world is dancing. Dance your own way. Let the world go different and choose to go in a different direction. It doesn't matter they may laugh at you and mock at you and speak anything they may speak. But at the end of the day, God will take you to where you are going. Because you are not going where they are going. They have their own way and how to go in their own way. You too, you have your own way, and how to go in your own way. Their way is not yours. For the Israelites to cross the Red Sea, God had to divide the Red Sea half for them to cross. But for Jesus to, to walk on the water, he did not have to part the waters, but had to walk on top of the water. The same way of crossing, but different ways of crossing. God has a different way of taking you to where he's taking you to. They may be who they are today, what they are today, by what they used, or by what they are using, which may be not a good way of you as a Christian youth to do it. You have your own way. Let those who are in prostitution do their prostitution and get their money. You have your own way of getting money to get there. You have your own different way that God has put for you. And it's not their way, it is God's way. And he, God, who made you to be his child, to accept him as Lord and Savior, knows what is better for you. Are you hearing me, somebody? Develop the do's and the don'ts. The devil will use you and run away from you. I remember one time I was in the hospital praying for the sick. And I went to this young man. This young man, his story was so pathetic. 
His leg was hanging in the air, for his leg was broken. His hands were broken. I asked him a simple question. What happened with you? He said, I don't know what happened with me. I have got everything at home. We have money at home. But I just thought to go with my friends to, to go and steal something. And my friends ran away and I was caught. I was beaten and they broke my hands. They broke my legs. And you see, you see that? The devil said, go and steal. And if you go to steal, the same devil will tell people, catch him. And the same devil, after catching you, he will say to them, burn him with the fire. That's how the devil is. He is there to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He may send you now, go and sleep with a man. And when he, he, he locates, he will locate a person with HIV and give you the HIV. And the devil says, we are done. Have a good day. I'm leaving. That's the devil. But God, he has given us the grace that through our Lord Jesus Christ, we may live, move, exist, and have our being. There is no any way that is a better way than the way of God. Are you hearing me, somebody? You must learn to develop the do's and the don'ts. What you are today is not what you'll be tomorrow. You can only be tomorrow a better person if you prepare your today. People who prepare their now, they become something better then. It is very important that you must begin to prepare. There is no any house without a foundation. Your life is the greatest foundation that you must lay. Otherwise, there won't be any foundation at the age of 55. Lay your foundation now, build on it. Are you hearing me, somebody? Lay your foundation now. Refuse to look at yourself as a poor person. Refuse to see the poverty that is in the family lineage. Refuse to look at that and choose to put your eyes on the cross to our author and finisher of our faith, our Lord Jesus Christ, that he is able to make you be what you want to be. I was not born in a rich family. I didn't grow up in a rich family. Yes, my parents before they were. And we had a civil war in our country called Malawi Operation Buzan. My father... Uh, he was involved in this war because he was working for the Malawi Young Pioneers. And there was war. There was what is called the disarmament. It was declared a peaceful, but eventually it wasn't peaceful. Did you hear that? And everything that we had was burnt by the soldiers, by the Malawi army. The cars, everything was burnt. The house was burnt. Everything was burnt. We became refugees of war. We were living in the bush, moved in the bush, we began to live a poor life. That even the poor people began to call us poor. Amen. But that does not mean that my life also should be channeled in the same way. Amen. Today I have helped my parents that they are now rich. Not because I was born rich and grew up rich. But because I chose to be different. When you choose to be different. Are you hearing me somebody? Amen. When you choose to be different. It is possible that you may be born in a poor family. But because you made a choice. I want to be different. I don't, I don't want to laugh when everybody's laughing. I don't want to do what everyone is doing. I want to do a different thing. I want to be a different me. I'm tired of this system, the instinct system of the young people. Because I am a victim of whatever and whosoever. And by what every youth is living. But I refuse to live that. And I choose to live a different life. I want to live and grow up a different person from everyone else. I remember everybody would come to me and say, hey, you look so different. You are so different with everyone. Why? I told them it's my choice. I chose to be different. I have got my own do's and my own don'ts. I have got my own do's and my own don'ts. I told myself, you cannot speak in this way. You can't be in this place. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. These are your limits. Don'ts and don'ts. It's very important for you as a young man to develop these things. Otherwise, I'll be praying for you, delivering you, and you're still living in that. And that won't change you anything. Prayer won't change you. It is the you that changes you that makes the change to happen on you because prayer can only change a person who has got a change in the heart. Tell your neighbor that. Say, choose to be different. Develop manners. Develop do's and the don'ts. How 
did you do that? You spending the whole night on internet. Oh, the whole night on WhatsApp. You must have the do's and the don'ts. Tell yourself, I will never wake up in the morning and go out without praying. That is just a don't. I, I can't just do that. I can't throw myself on the bed without even prayer. That it is just a don't. You shouldn't do even that. This is why you meet the devils in your dreams. Instead of having prophetic dreams and inspiration from God, you end up dreaming demonic dreams because you just throw yourself on the bed. Learn to pray and seek God. I want to meet you in the night as I sleep. I want you to reveal to me and speak to me. I am praying. I am committing my spirit in your hands in the name of, the, of, of your son, Jesus Christ. You have to be praying. God, forgive every sin I've done in this day and help me not do the same sin tomorrow. You must learn. I can't just sleep with a prayer. I can't just wake up in the morning and walk out of prayer. You have to pray for yourself, Lord, as I walk out. It is written, blessed shall be my going out and blessed shall be my coming in. Lord, as I'm going out, I declare I'm blessed. As I'll be coming back, I declare I am blessed. Lord, every accident shall not be my portion. Every good thing shall be my portion. I prophesy favor in my life today. I prophesy grace in my life today in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I cover myself with the hedge of protection against every power and against every prosperity. Against every demon that flies by day or fly by night. I cover myself and I speak the blood of Jesus. And whatsoever one attach me before touching me, it will touch the blood of the Lord. You must learn to cover yourself and defend yourself before walking out. Declare, oh Lord, I speak wisdom, skill, Today, as I walk out in the name of Jesus Christ, it is just a, what you do. This is part of your dues. You must develop yourself to grow in that way. Tell yourself, I will never eat something without blessing the Lord. The reason why God blessed David is because of his heart, manners. The do's, the don'ts. You tell yourself, I can't just stay without going to church. One Sunday, I must find myself in church. The reason why South Africa has got a very complication spiritual background, it is because of that. Most of you, you are in different churches and your parents are in different churches. Because of one reason, your parents did not develop the do's and the don'ts. If you are not careful, trust me, your kids and your children will end up worshipping the devil. Because you are not preparing the future of your children. Your kids must learn. You must develop your children when they are young. Where they must be on Sunday. Train them to believe what you believe. If you don't, you must know they are Muslims today because their fathers we are Muslims. They are Catholics today because their parents were Catholic. There are people in a prophetic church today because their parents were in that church. And your kids are the next. What they will be is who you are. Amen. Tell them about develop the do's and the don'ts. Get up your hands for the Lord if you can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I'm going to have one scripture that I, I'm going to read. Daniel 1 verse 17. All right, if you are there, let me just know. If anyone is there, let me know. Pastor Lighton. All right, thank you for giving us on the screen. We're going to read together. One, two, three, go read. Give me NIV. One, two, three, go. Read in NIV book. One, two, three, go. 
NIV, NIV, please. One, three, go read. Stop there. One, three, go again. Stop there. Once again. Mm -hmm. To this what? Uh, 1 John chapter 2 verse 13. Let's start from verse 12. 1 John chapter 2 from verse 12. All right. To these four young men, give me 1 John first, 2 verse, from verse 12. To these four young men, God gave them what? Understanding, wisdom, skill. I write to you, dear children, because your sins I have, I mean, have been forgiven on account of his name. 13. I write to you, young men. Can you, can you be very fast, please? Can you be very fast? Go back to this um, 12. One of the go read. All right, uh, 13, one they go. All right, okay, let's go to B. The same scripture from B. 13b. All right, and you young men. Let's read again. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. Trust me. <laughs> For a young man to be successful, you must overcome the wicked one. Daniel 1 verse 8 to verse 9. Just look at this. Daniel 1 verse 8. The Bible says something very important. It says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. That's distinct. Separated himself. That what? In his heart, that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. He refused. He said, no. Take me out of this nonsense. I refuse to defile myself. I refuse to destroy myself with the wine, with anything. I refuse. It is the distinct. It's a separate copy. Completely. Look what you number say, make a decision now. Or tell them again. Make a decision now. Do you know that in a cigarette, do you know that in a cigarette, in a science, when I was learning science, do you know that in a cigarette there is sub a certain substance called nicotine? Do you know one teaspoon of nicotine, when you put it in the tongue of a dog, a dog dies immediately? Do you know that? One tablespoon of nicotine put on the tongue of a dog, not in the mouth, just on a tongue. A dog dies immediately. Now, the Bible says your body is the house of the living God. And the Bible says don't destroy the temple of God. And imagine putting a, such a substance in the temple of God. Smoking may not be a sin. But what you're doing, you're destroying the temple of God, which makes it to be a sin. Amen. 
Are you there? Are you following? Are you following somebody? Yes. One be like, ah, that's, that is smoking a sin? Okay, let's be in your side. That, okay, it's not a sin. But what, what you are doing, just one puff of smoking, it has got nicotine, and that is destroying the temple of God. Your body is only for jokes. Do you know that God had to come on earth to make a human being with his own hands? And you are destroying it. Are you following? If you're following, raise up a hand and say amen. amen. I said raise up a hand and say amen if you're following. Amen. Overflow, raise up a hand and say amen. amen. Are we there? Are you there? The Bible says, do not get drunk with wine in which there's too much debauchery. Rather, be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> be filled with a loss paracletos. Are you hearing me, somebody? Say, so I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. For these four young men, God gave them wisdom. God gave them what? Wisdom. And what? And the skill. That's what you need. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. If he did to these four young men, he can give you too. To these four young men, God gave them wisdom, skill. Knowledge, understanding, to a level whereby they had understanding of visions and dreams. Now, if I look at you, do you understand your own visions? Do you understand your own dream? What is your vision of life? What do you dream for? What, what, what are the dreams of your life? What do you want to become? What do you want to become? There's no different in dreams. The dreams you dream as you sleep and the dreams you have for life. Sam, Daniel had understanding of both. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. Look at your neighbor. I said, don't be so serious. Don't look so holy. Because I know you better. Yeah, looking so holy. I say hallelujah. Oh, amen. Oh, sharamanda ramande. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you must make a decision to be different. Are you there? Let's now look at the last part. Developing principles. Said developing principles. How many here have got principles? How many would like to have principles? Principles. Smile. Awa. Who died? Smile. Now, are you here? Yes. It's a principles. principles. Principles, it is a small statement, but very powerful. Very what? Powerful. Principles are a guideline by which a person is ruled. It is a set of rules.
principles more similar to the do's and the don'ts. Only that these becomes your guideline that it governs you. And it becomes your personal constitution. Are we there? My first principle is I told myself to make the Bible my guideline. Make the Bible your guideline. That's my first principle. And the Holy Spirit, my reference. So I am guided. Whatever happens, I go to consult in the Bible. So it's my principle. My principle is I must be guided by the word of the Lord and my reference must be the Holy Spirit. It is my principle and I'll never break it. All my kids are being trained that. The Bible. Make the Bible. It's very, very important. Don't just live a life. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to Bushir? Are you, am I? Are you a zombie or what? Tell your neighbor, develop your life on the principles. Principles are guidelines. You must have a written things in your life. This is how I must live. One of my principles is no matter what, never give up. It's there on my principles. No matter what, I'm not a quitter. I don't quit. Despite that, one of my principles is be sensitive. And I'm very sensitive. It's a principle that you make it. You put it there. But it helps you. And every month I go through my principles. Again and again. Where in this month I didn't do well. Where did I breach my principles? And what must I do to live by these rules? Wow. So it, it's, it's not a thing that can not be broken. Only that can happen when the Holy Spirit says I must do different. Are you there? Yes. Are you there? Yes. Turn about, are you under principles or just leave? So are you an animal or a human being? You got yourself, I'm a son of Major One. You just move and goes, woo, woo. Hey, hey. Who are you, son of Major? Which Major? Look for another Major One in the streets. Principles are very important. They guard you. Write them down. Have them in your books. Take notes in and have principles. I told myself when I was 15, when I was making principles, I wrote one of the principles I wrote when I was 15. I wrote, do not live like a boy, live like a man. Don't live like a girl. Live like a woman. Talk like a man, not a boy. You know there's a difference, eh? Boys and men. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Yes. 
Don't be like a girl. Hey, girls. 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 Matata. Don't live like just a boy. You must learn to be different. Refuse. This must be your principle. I refuse to live like a girl. I want to live like a woman. A principled woman. A woman of value. Do you know that, do you know that everything, we are living in the world where things, they go down or they go up. Things, they gain value or lose value. Do you know that? It's not how beautiful you are to gain the value. How principled you are. There are so many beautiful women, so many in the world. With their beauty, they will die without getting married. And it's so dangerous that when you have got bad manners, you don't know you have bad manners. Are you hearing me, somebody? When you are developing principles, writing them down, you ask all your friends, tell me the truth. Where am I wrong? They will tell you, you are wrong-tempered. You have got anger. On your own, you can't know it. Where you are, you're asking for forgiveness. You want somebody, where else they are, you want you to forgive them. Well, as where they are, they're also looking for your forgiveness. If I may ask a question here, to say, who wronged you? You will tell me all the people who wronged you, but you will never say people you wronged. Because your life is built on me. But when you begin to lean on the principles, you find out there are more people you must say sorry than they must say sorry to you. In every relationship when it's ending, a woman will just blame a man and a man will just blame a woman. Instead of asking yourself questions from your friends, people who maintain the relationships are those who ask their friends, how am I? Who am I? They tell them, you have this problem, this problem, and this problem. When they get into a relationship, they work out those areas. Yeah. They ask their spouse, tell me all the areas where I am wrong. Tell me all, the, and they write them down. But in this new generation, a world of dot com. Where you are told you have got anger. A woman will rise up to defend herself. Amen. What do you mean? Hey, you. Hey, that's why yesterday. What about? You must be happy when you are told all your wrong areas than you are told your good areas. Because you're already, those are your already your strength. You don't have to improve your strong areas. No. You can only improve the, your areas where you're wrong to become better. A relationship where a man or a woman opens up and tells you areas you're wrong is the best relationship. Because you are, you are able to know the areas you're wrong. Stop defending yourself. Improve those areas. Rush to say I am sorry, even if you are not supposed to say I'm sorry. For in that foolishness, you are able to pick the areas you are supposed to improve. Don't condemn all your critics. Because in the sum of the criticism they give you, there is a sense. There's no any way our church is going to be bad. You go to this church. No, it's a bad church. You go to this church. It's a bad church. This church. Oh, no, 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 it's a bad church. The pastor there, you... 
You go to this church. Oh, you're, you're a major one. It is you who is a problem now. What do I mean? I mean there is no way you can date three men and all of them are bad men. It is you who is bad. There is no way you can date three girls and all of them are bad. It is you who is bad. You must find out which areas am I wrong. Find out where am I wrong. The places where you must improve. And you must tell your friend, help me in the areas I am always wrong. Not just be defending yourself. Oh, you see. Oh, now. Hey, you've started. Oh, hey. No. Slow down. Look at yourself and learn. Are you hearing me, somebody? People who don't ask the areas of their weakness, they lose their relationship. As the way trees loses their leaves, it just falls like a leaf. It go, it's gone. Yo, he was my boyfriend. Yo, 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 I love him, but he's gone. He want to come back. He want to come back. Look for another one. Now you'll be busy looking for another one. Now you get another one. I you have another one now. Four or five months. Yo, ah, I don't like him. Yo. Better the other one. Yo, the other one. Yo. My sister, the deliverance we must give you is sinking you in the swimming pool of Lion of Judah. Tell about develop principles. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me, somebody? Girls, if you want to get married, then do, do one thing. If you want to get married, then do one thing. Don't date for a relationship. Date for marriage. <laughs> Come on. Uh, uh, uh. It's so amazing. Some women, some girls, they just call men. Every man, all oh, those, these men, yo, they behave like dogs. <laughs> but when a man whistles in the streets, who turns back? So who is a dog? Refuse to live a such a life. Don't call men dogs. If while well, well, any man who whistles on you, you turn it back. Who is a dog here? Divine Encyclopedia. Oh, yes. Marriage Counselor. Oh, yes. Paranomics here. Oh, yes. AKA. Bazooka. Yeah. Mystico of Rigima and Akalepsi. Abedi Pele of Prophecy. Oh, yes. Six Five Basia. Oh, yes. Are you here? Yes. Don't just take your tenny. Who is the dog here?
Listen, if a man comes to you and he says they love you, ask them, love me for what? <laughs> Second question. Not just, I love you, ah, uh, you, yo, yo, me too. Major power station. No more no shading in our life. Power. Energy. You are too much. You are forensic. You are Prophetic forensic pathology. Oh, yes. Are you here? Yes. You love me. Are you? It's not a competition. The fact your friends, they have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, does not define you two to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Wait. Wait. Are you hearing me? Don't date for marriage because everyone in the family is getting married. You will cry. Don't marry because it has been your dream to get married in church. Like, yo, I, I wish I wish I was in church eh, wailing in, uh, in this man. No, don't get married because of that reason. You gonna fall in danger. Don't get married because you're growing old. Like, yo, I'm getting old, I must marry. I'm like, oh yo, I'm getting old. There's no age in marriage. We had a woman here who I prophesied to from Botswana who got married at the age of 63. And you're just 34. You, I'm getting old. Are you crazy? Don't get married because you're looking for somebody who is beautiful or handsome. You're going to marry a lion. I'm looking for a guy. A guy who is a yellow bone. Do, 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 Major. Are you hearing me, somebody? Don't get married because of that. These are the main things destroying our community. Marry because God has allowed you to have an opportunity to have that person in your life. Marry because it's a ministry. Marriage is a ministry. Loving someone is a ministry. God has called you to, to love them. Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah, I want to marry a woman who looks like this, who looks like that. Okay, so you marry that woman, and in case you have an accident, and the look changes. original the one and the only one major himself that's my papa power doctor major p h d are you here 
Tell your neighbor, you must learn one thing. One thing. Develop original hearts. Original, original love. Original love. Are, you Are you here? Be principled. Don't just be taken by relationships. Any man you see, yo, that man, yo. Yo, look, bone. Bone. Be principled. Be different. Whenever a girl is like, boom, look, you. You're like, what's wrong with her? Oh, yeah. Do, 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 to major. The fierce general. The reason why most youth, especially women, we have got a few successful young women today because all they're looking up to is boyfriends and getting married. You must, at this age, be working on how to become independent. Be working on how to become rich on your own. Be working on how to change your society. Be working on how to take the gospel far. Be working on how to become a king of a financial. Are you hearing? Black man. Are you, are you getting me? Sit down, everyone. Don't just be taken by everybody, and everyone is going this direction. And you go, hey, let's go. Hey, hey. Let's turn one to the go. Samaya. No. Choose to be different. Choose to be different. Are you hearing me, somebody? Choose to be what? Look life different. Tell yourself, I eat from the mountain top. I operate from the mountain top. I am not everyone. I am not everybody. Because everybody is talking about getting married. You too. No. Let them go. Let them go. You have your own direction. And the way you're going to get married, it will be different. Are you hearing me, somebody? The way you're going to get married, it will be what? You, you're going to announce of your new boyfriend today, and you'll be announcing of your wedding in the following week. Leave with them. They should keep on dating this man, dating another man, dating another man. You tell them the day I will tell you I have a boyfriend. I'll be telling you I'm getting married the following week. No, 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 no. No, 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 Boys jump from one girl to another. Boys, they keep on hurting you, hurting you, hurting you. A man cannot do that. A girl can hurt you. Today, she hurts you. Tomorrow, she hurts you. She jumps, she dates this guy, this guy, this guy at the same time. A woman cannot do that. Choose to be different. Are you hearing me? I am, moving forward. I am moving forward with or without you. With or without you. As long as God of Major One is here, as long as God of Major One is here, I will make it in life. I will make it in life. It's my desire. Yeah.
Are, are you here? Are you home or something? Huh? Sit down. Overflow. Are you there? Are you hear? You hearing that? Prophetic channel. Only channel in my house. No bombs as well too. No more evil. No more cartoon network. No more skin sun. No more redeem seat. Energy. Power. Are you here? Are you here? Is one number hearing or they are lost? Now ask your neighbor. If, uh, if you are sitting next to a man, ask them, a boy or a man. Are you a boy or a man? A woman or a girl? Ask them. All right, so tell them, a real man, a real man has no anger issues. A real man plans his future. A real man is so calm. He understands. So not the... Uh, tell them, a real woman, she has a vision. She plans for her future. A real woman does not cry anything. She is strong, determined, focused. She cares. Not to. I choose to be a successful person. I choose to operate from the mountain top. I choose to think different. To behave different. I am a man of principles. So I am not just an ordinary person. The Holy Ghost dwells in me. I have the Holy Spirit in me. So nobody can touch me. Nobody can stop me. I am moving forward. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I am moving forward.
Tell your neighbor, you are an amazing person. <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to repeat my statement. In life, at your youth, refuse to make mistakes. I, I remember I met a certain man who looked at me and told me, he said, I think I wasted my youth. I wish I was young like you and do the things you do. Because at your age, I was a troublesome. You know, it's very important for you to understand this principle. To make use of your energy that you have. Don't waste your energy on alcohol, women, smoking, and all the nonsense things that you're doing. Waste all your energy on things which matter in life. You are sitting listening to me talking to you. Refuse to think in your family way because your family is struggling. Separate yourself. Choose to have a distinct. Look at yourself as a different person. God loved you and called you and he gave you the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells inside you. And this Spirit of God is a spirit without limit. He has given you a spirit without measure. There is no any country that you can't go. There is nothing that you can't achieve. Absolutely, there is no any marriage that you're looking for that God can't give you. Have faith and look at yourself as the most favored person by God, who God has most loved in your family to use you and take you far in order to save your family, your community, your country, and the whole world. You must know you have the anointing and the spirit of God that is not a spirit of failure. It is a spirit of excellency, a spirit of success. It lives and dwells in you. The fact that you didn't make it at the school does not mean that your life and your future is shattered. There are so many rich people and millionaires who didn't even go as far as you went. It is very important to understand that God has given you an opportunity to do it and to make it in life. Use this time. Now, don't look where man is going to come from. Look on your ideas. Because God says, write your vision down. So that he who runs with it can look at it and give you what you need. Or what God is expecting for you to do, to write your vision down. Write what you want to become. Because God is about to take you into a level and a place you have never been. There is other side of you you have never tested. And I believe... After today, God will begin to show you the advantages of your life, the purpose of your living, why you were born, where you are, and why you shall be. May God bless you. May God bless ECG youth. May God bless everyone. I love you. Just stand up, everyone. Just stand up, everyone. Just stand up. Just raise up your hands. Just raise up your hands. I want to pray, and I want you to pray. And as I pray, I'm going to have different groups of people. You see, we have got the people. My message today is more powerful and important than anything. You're quiet, right? How many says this message will change my life? 
And then it says, I will change completely. I, I will be a different person from now. As well as my hands, I just want you to pray. And look at yourself, the things, all areas, whether it's anger, whether it's fear, whatever it is, that it may be in your life. Whether things, wrong, 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 wrong things that you're doing, and you want God help you to change. This is your time and your, your, your opportunity that God is calling you for. Just raise up your hands and form me this prayer. Say, oh, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father tonight, tonight, I surrender my life once again in your hands. Forgive me. Forgive me. Any area I've sinned against you. I come in total surrender. Dropping all my mistakes before your presence. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, wash me by your blood. Me by your blood. Forgive, my sins. Forgive my sins. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. All bad things I used to do, I, I drop them in your presence. I, your presence. I, receive, your I receive your spirit. And from tonight, and from tonight I, receive I receive the principles. I receive good manners. I receive good manners. The do's and the don'ts. I will be a person of excellency. I'll be an example to many. I will motivate many. I refuse to think poor. I refuse to think a failure. I reject depression. In the name of Jesus, my family will be saved through my life. Physically, Spiritually, financially, I'll be used by God to deliver my family, to finance my family. In the name of Jesus, I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. I refuse to see the problems around me and think in that way. I have decided. To see, the grace of the Lord. to see the grace of the Lord and to put my eyes on that grace in the name of Jesus.